Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. And we're looking <clears throat> at a really interesting market. Let me just have a look and see if it's Apple. I've got, I haven't got an updated Dow 30. I've got Dow 30. So this goes down a little bit. Yeah, I don't know how updated this is. Uh, PG Brockton and Gamble. Apple just down, but it's so heavily weighted. Look, Apple's down from that peak F. It makes a peak F today if there's no new high, recovery high. 184.95 was the high yesterday. Just missed the 185 round number high. Oh, watching this closely. All right, let's get to our story. Our story is that the Dow has had a spectacular move going from 32,586 to 33,805. So that 1,000-point, um, well, actually 11, 1,200-point rally has seen a bit of a give back. That's what we were anticipating. So within that context, look at this rectangle of the weekly chart. Yeah, you could have an inverse head and shoulders. You can have a, a regular head. You can do it any way you want. But at this particular point, the price in the weekly chart is walking the nine-period exponential moving average. That's a good sign. The monthly chart is really struggling to get out of the Chapman Wave inside track. We've just begun the month of June. But wait a minute, begun the month of June? What about the S&P, which is now uh, down $1.60 at $42.72? Just got to liquidate that throat. Okay, we got <clears throat> the weekly chart trying to get to the 43.25 left side high. That's where I think there's going to be tremendous resistance if we get there. But the weekly chart is helping the monthly chart to break out. And that's really important. No, the MACD has not crossed positive yet. It's close, but it hasn't done. Now we're going to go for the sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Got to get that sneeze out of the way. I remember Dave White always used to have a sneeze every once in a while in his show. Uh, so we've got uh, looking at the S&P trying to, it's, now it's now only down 0.73, looking at the QQQ. Um, uh, very nice, came back just minus 90 at 354. You're looking at the IWM, which was actually earlier leading the pack. Yep, it's leading the pack. It's up 1.29%, up 233 at 181.90. Mm, I'm beginning to like this. This is the first time we've seen this whole thing, the rotation. I'm suggesting to you that over the coming four to six weeks, we're going to see the whole semiconductor, the whole NVIDIA area, the whole it even might impact a little bit the QQQs. Pull back its rallying phase, have a bit of a digestive rotational aspect. As we see, maybe the small caps finally come on. That's how we got these rotational corrections. I love that kind of rotational correction because what it does is it allows the strongest areas to take a breather. They don't have to collapse with the whole market, they take a breather. It's a relay race. While well, they hand the battle over to another sector. Now the Dow is only down two. The S&P is up 1.1. I love this. And now I want you to show you something else. Look at the XLF. The XLF is now making it for the first time. We've actually got a rally since uh, April. This is the first time we've got a leg D in the daily chart of the XLF. As we speak in right now, it started leg D. But as it's making D, it's not the fact that it's gone to a D. When you're coming off lows, going to a D is important because it means you can go to E, F, and G. You can even recycle because it's up. But when you're going to highs, I mean, have a look at this. Let me, I'll pick one, one up. Um, yeah, look at this. This is what we have, bots. This is the, oops. Going to highs. A recovery highs, that is. B O T Z, and I, everything about this chart right now says this is not parabolic, but it's extended and it's going to a D. In fact, it's uh, still a leg D. It hasn't made a, a peak D, and it's a leg E in the weekly chart. All of these charts are looking. Look at the SMHs; they're all looking as if, wow, that was an incredible move to the upside. Now we need to take a breather. Whereas if you look at the XLF, the financials. 
And if we're looking at the XLF, which is at 32.94, up 30 cents, that is coming off lows or the low area. Uh, if you look at KRE, which is the um, regional uh, regional banking ETF, now I should mention we are long. Uh, we've had this periodically. And we are back to long. And it's trading right now in a leg D, but a leg D shouldn't frighten you when you're coming off a serious lows. It should say, great, obviously, if you're going to rally, you're going to go to peak A, you're going to go to peak B, you're going to go to a C and a D. But that means you, when you get to a D, you don't have to say, oh, my God, look at that D at 78.81 in January of 2022. That looks like it could be going to a top with a doji, two doji candles. And it was because it plunged all the way back to the 30, uh, well, the most recent low was in the 34 area. So this is really important. In fact, I love the action that's going on right now. It's not easy, but I love the action. It's a challenge, but it's a challenge I think we're up to it. <laughs> we'll see. Um, now, the other thing that I want you to say is, you know, I talk about. In fact, next week uh, I'll be I'll be away, um, and I'm going to take time. I will be doing my newsletter, and I I hope to do my shows. I might have to do some early in the morning, because I want to spend time. It's the first time I've had where I'm going to just spend some time working on that. You know, I talk about a two-click session. Is it possible every, every, uh, maybe it's, every, I, I, I should just blurt out the number, but I'm not going to blurt it out because that would be silly. But if you look at the charts, you will find that, the, say, the S&P E-Money Futures, there are so many times a month where it's possible at a certain point earlier in the morning, it could be 6 o'clock, it could be, if you're up at 4, it could be 4 o'clock, but it could even be at that 8.30 news-related uh, spike and, and drop and then start to move higher where you get a two-click session where you can click, for instance, yeah, let's just say you were able to get close to between the uh, 42, 68.50 uh, low this morning at 9.35. What was that? Let me just check the exact time. 9.37. So it starts, you're waiting now for a green, nine-period moving average crossover, and it does that. So in the, in the 42, low 42, 70s, 72, 73, 74, 75, you pick it up. There's a chance. That I'm not saying today, today. I'm saying this is what I'm, I'm working on because it's happened so many times on the upside where you can get the low and just at 2.30 or 4 o'clock that day, you can make a decision whether to get out of the position. It could be much, much quicker, but two-click sessions or a four-click session, as we had uh, uh, Brent talk about the other day that he had in the SPY uh, when he was using options, uh, it's it's really nice to be able to put in your position and then just kind of forget about it. You put in your stop or you can raise your stop and just say, great, let's see if the whole thing is held. Um, I'm not sure with the Dow being, uh, uh, having the pressure of the with the S&P. But that's what I want to be working on next week. How, trying to formulate it Say, where can you do it and what are you looking for? I, I pretty much know what to look for, but it's to put it in the sequence. I'll be back in a moment. Down, down three. S&P's up two. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Oh, I've got a bunch of questions and I haven't been able to. Uh, uh, all right. So let's just go through these questions. So look what we've got. We've got a cup formation. Uh, it's not a ladle. No, it's a cup formation. And now I've got a, a, a handle. I'm not, it's not one of my favorite patterns. But look at this. I'll, I'll just do this quickly and then I'll go to all the other stuff. Um, this is the 10-minute the, the E-minute. You remember yesterday I said, look at that long rectangle. Sometimes it can go above. And if it breaks, if it breaks the midpoint, I drew the dashed line at 42.90. I said, be careful uh, because if it closes sharply lower, there's a good chance it'll test the low. Well, it had a pullback. It held, and then it ran all the way the nine-period moving average to a peak E at about 1 o'clock. Uh, made a doji candle in this rectangle formation, pulled back, and then it pull back and held that blue dash blue uh, horizontal line midpoint line of the, of the, of the channel right there and it broke down and it ran all the way down to the 4274 area then it tried to bounce and it stayed there look at this it traded in a range of 42 uh, about 87 to 4274 the whole evening from yesterday at three o'clock two o'clock to three o'clock it stayed in that range, it made a peak A, B, C, D, pulls back, makes an, a, a, a rogue wave, E, pulls back, so has another peak A, B, C, 1, C, 2, pulls back, and now it's made this leg A. Is this really an A, or is this that, that uh, you remember I called it yesterday, I called it the Eiffel Tower, goes straight up and straight down? Well, I think not. I think the MACD is holding, the stochastics rallying, the unbalanced volumes rallying. I think this is a leg A, and there's a chance, just a chance, that this becomes a peak A, B, C, D. And when we get to that 4290 level, if we do that, that's the test. A close over 40, we're at 4284. A close over 4296 says, hey, you can go all the way to yesterday's high 
at one o'clock, one ten minutes past one to the forty three oh five point seventy five. We'll follow this because um, if Steve, uh, I know I can imagine being overseas. I know from my own experiences. That's why I always take extra backup uh, ways of being able to, um, to to get the internet. I have extra. I have a Verizon called uh, Jetpack. All sorts of things. Uh, but overseas, it, it makes it even harder. So if he's unable to do the show, I'm going to try to do the show at 11 o'clock. We'll see. We'll see if he's here. I hope he shows up. It'll be great to hear from Steve. He does a fantastic job. And uh, so we'll, we'll be waiting. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, as I said, next week, I'm hoping to really put in some effort. I don't know how to do it yet. Uh, in terms of digital, I can do it visually. I can do it all. The, all, all look at all these left side, right side, price, time matches, etc. I'm going to try my best to do it. Um, I don't know if I can do it through Trade Station, but maybe a warden I can figure it out to to get the crossovers and what we're looking at to be able to give some some codification to a two click session or a four click session. In other words, you go in once and you don't do a thing, and you wait until. You get to D or something in the 10-minute chart. What tells you to stay in? And you just stay in as long as you can. Then you get out. You click out. So that's your two clicks. Maybe you have to do it twice. SUPN was the first question that we've got. Let me do that. I'll have time. I, if, if, if Steve doesn't show, I'll, I'll be able to do Steve's show. SUPN is a supreme something, a supreme pharmaceutical. It's trading at uh, SUPN is a symbol, 34.15 up 47 cents. So this is what you like to see. You like to, so in the Chavway methodology, the methodology itself, and if you if you subscribe to my service, you'll be able to go through all these different webinars, but I discuss it in great detail. Then a buy signal is where the price keeps coming down, coming down, coming down. And then what you want to see, especially if it's under 10%, the stochastic go from negative to positive. In other words, the faster moving average crosses over the, the, the uh, slower moving average, and that goes preferably to green. All right? So that's the first thing. But you've got to get price movement. When you get price movement, you want to be looking at the price. If the price is just kind of okay, um, then you've got to have a look at the MACD. Well, the MACD in this particular instance right there on the 1st of June, 32.58 was the price low. MACD hadn't even started. The histogram was improving a little bit. I wonder if I'm going to have to – I should keep this here. This is the uh, CCI, the uh, Commodity Channel Index. Uh, it had been mentioned to me about a year or two ago. That's something – and I've always kept it there. But I actually use it very differently to the way it, it theoretically is supposed to be used. doesn't matter. Anyway, it's just I'm showing it now. It's a little messy. So what we're looking at is the histogram is improving. And then it had that day if, at, at about 10 o'clock in the morning. If you were looking at this and the thing was down at 32.62, you say, oh, my God, this is ah. Oh. And then it closed with a beautiful Chapman Roman candle, green Roman candle. And, and now we're nicely above yesterday's high. So this is the start. It's gone from. A buy signal in the stochastic to a buy signal in the unbalanced volume. Nothing yet uh, at that point in the MACD. The uh, nine period is still way under the 14 period. So this is just the start of something that looks quite impressive. But it's the start. I haven't yet got any confirmed buy signal. That's on the daily chart. Monthly chart has got this one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. I wonder if it's an exact one-to-one. -one. Uh, let's just do this right there. one to one to the downside um, so make that blue and we'll do another one here uh, it's a little bit less uh, quite a bit less actually okay so that's a good sign so I would say if you've started a position in this if that was the question um, oh considering a 33.33 .33 entry uh, considering, whoa, I don't know when that moved up so quickly. No, it didn't hit 33.54. 33.54 uh, 33 was the low of the day. Oh, you would like to get it if it pulls back. No, if you're going to get it, you'd, you should start your position right here at 34.14, even though it's um, 60 cents off the low of the day. Why? Because the way that the nine-period moving average is accelerating higher It'll only cross positive if this thing gets to the 35, 34, 90, 35, 
3478 to 3498 area. You might see the line period getting close to crossing positive. But at that point, the MACD, which is right as we speak, up 0.02, it is just crossing positive. That's what you want to see. So if you have not got into it, and I don't know if you're using options, that's different altogether. But if you're getting in, start your position here. You've missed the best entry, so it has to be slightly less than the original amount that you would put in. I like it. But I'm not saying this is going to go all the way to the 200 period moving average of 35.43. I'm saying that's the way we like to get starter positions that increase in value because the MACDs cross positive. Finally, the 9 period moving average crosses positive to give the real impetus. But you've got the stochastic giving the talk of the liftoff and the Chapman Wave Roman candle of yesterday. So far, we're really nicely above the high of yesterday, which was 33.78. And, and all I'm going to say is if you want to put in a stop, I would not put a stop under the low today since it's this is the chance to start. And the, it's in the farmer group, it isn't a single-digit farm. It's a, tr a double-digit, a 34. It's got a little bit of weight. It means that other people are getting in. I mean, they're not just regular human beings. But, but uh, the by the volume right now it's very it's it's 21,000 probably a little high for early in the morning but I can't really tell but I this is where I would say maybe under just I wouldn't mess around for a few cents when we are standing at 34 tiptoe right in right here that's not your full position and you can add to it if it starts to improve and key support is now at 33 33 30 I'll be back Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago and the student has now become the master Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
Hi, Bob. So the next question I had is to be wants to know, could I look at DPST for a trade? Um, DPSDT is the, oh, the DX Daily uh, Regional. Oh, thank you for telling me about that. I forgot all about it. Uh, DPSD. Let me make a note of that. DPSD. ST, that is. And that's the first question. The other question was just a moment ago, and I forgot to type in the SUPN. Yep, that was also very interesting. SUPN. And we'll put them in a list here. And IWM was another question. IWM. Okay. All right. So within that context, what we're looking at here is DPST is the uh, regional bank ETF. So I've just done a little work for you on the actual, you have to use that as your core. In other words, KRE, the symbol for the, oh, that didn't, this is only a C, oh, 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 I love it when there's a slight, slight divergence. So what you got now is only leg C. Uh, let me double check. My eye says it's absolutely leg C, but we'll do 80, uh, 61.20 on the 23rd, 61.20, and uh, 6120, double top. So that's still a B. If it went one penny higher, that would have been a C. So this is a leg C. If you're looking at the weekly chart, the monthly chart, just forget about it. That, that, I mean, there's, look, KRE, there's so much going on in the bank area, the regional banks especially, especially with what's going on with loans and all sorts of things. I read a whole bunch of interesting uh, in the den. They're just fabulous articles that, are, that you can read about. But all I can say is I'm looking at the price. And the price says, if you don't mind, I'm using this as the, uh, you have to use KRE as your core. You see, when it went to peak B on the 23rd at 42.09, look what happened. At 40, uh, 42.34, that's your leg C on the second, but the DP, uh, whatever it was, the DPST did not do that. This is a very strong leg C. Now, this is what I'm, I'm intrigued about. I did a whole study and I talked to you about it and I said, the there's a chap wave price volume climax this is a technique that i developed a long time ago but put into practice in the last couple of years we've, we've had both positions that worked and not didn't work or i, I would have worked but i decided not to hold them because there were other things we were looking at but what it does is that there is such a selling climax and to get a climax in a whole sector this is not a stock this is not like schwab which had that on the march the uh, on March the 13th, the 15th or 13th, it had that incredible, that was perfect because it had all the ingredients. It had this horrible red candle on the, uh, where was it? On the 2nd of May. And then it had an even worse one on the 3rd of May. And then a gap down where everyone said, I'm done with, sh I oh, they went, you know, just couldn't take it anymore. And at 45 Wrong one. That was the second time. The first time was on March the 13th at 45 round number low. Look at that gap down and then a horrible candle on the uh, 9th of March. And then the 10th of March, it was just even worse, even a bigger candle and uglier. And then it just gaps down with the biggest, longest uh, price range, a range between 45 round number low and 54.90 as the high. And then my reasoning was that that was a Chapman Wave, a really, that was a perfect Chapman Wave volume climax price reversal. And therefore, if it closed over the high of the day, a good few times, there was a chance that it could go 28 bars. This is a daily, he said 28 days in this case, uh, without taking out that 45 low. And if it holds above the candle, the wick of that candle, the ugly 13th of March candle, um, in those 28 sessions, you can go to 56 sessions. Well, it's way more than 56 sessions now. It's had a retest in the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m formation to the 4565. I don't want to go through the litany of what I just said a moment ago. With that second climax reversal, it wasn't really the same. This is now what I call internal low and a perfect residual low. And I've been thinking about that in, in social things. And I'll, I'll talk about that some other time because it, did, it doesn't affect the market too much. It's not something important right now. So this 
has still uh, trading at 53.92. Look where it is. But this was not the perfect one. Perfect is when it holds way above and at 56 bars, it, it says goodbye to that candle, the, the volume, and everyone who's sold out. In all this time, he says, I don't know if I can get back. I don't, oh, my God, and now it's 30%. Oh, my God, it's 40% higher. It's not the case in Schwab. So, But in the KRE, there is just a chance that we've got something like it. Why? Because 34.52 on the 4th of May was the low. The high was 37.05. Well, it went above it. It closed above it for three se four sessions. That's really good. But then it went into it. And the rule of thumb is it mustn't close below the body candle of the, um, usually I say the open, but it's either the body of the candle or the low. In this case, the low was 34. Uh, opens at 36.60. What am I missing? And it closes. Oh, there it is at 36.08. Yeah. So 36.08. Yes, it did. It went under. This is like the dreaded H pattern in a way. Uh, 36. It didn't close under it. No, it never closed under it. And in fact, it's gone higher. But what I liked very much was, you see, and this is what I'm talking about. So, Dan, the, the stock you were looking at, SUPN, look, treat it as if this is the low, right, that we're talking about here. So what I'm saying is you see the nine-period exponential moving average. You see how long when it's a very, it's got this huge U-turn. It's like a hairpin bend in one of those Lamar, like the the, 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 the auto races used to be with those hairpin bends. Um and then when it finally straightens out for the for the straight itself, um, you've already had a huge price move. And that's what you want to see in SUPN. So this is what I'm saying. I like it very much. The fact that it's a leg D is not anywhere as important as can it close above the high of the 28th of April. This is KRE, S&P Regional Banking ETF. And to tell you the truth, there was a stock that I wanted to choose that was way lower price than this, uh, maybe a fifth lower Um but I decided I want to be in the I, I want to not stick with one stock coming off a low like this because this is still early in the game. We have no idea. Look at the weekly chart how it's been struggling with small candles to move higher and it hasn't even got back into that cluster formation on the left. So this is the starter position. So if you ask me, is this the time now to get into the three times long? I would just say I I'd be hesitant to put that kind of money at risk unless uh, DPST unless you take the risk off by saying I like the fact that it's only 62 and it's not uh, and it's three times whereas at 42 at uh, one time uh, there's a big difference so if you want to do it that way I'd say being a leg C I'm going to go with the core and that's KRE but at this particular point, I would say to you, I have – this is the start. The MACD is good. The, the, the stochastics at 75 hasn't gone to 8%. On balance, fund, it's a great uh, RSI is starting to improve a lot. So start your position. That's all I would say to you. Here at 62.66, I don't know whether to say to you just go into the single one like we have or to go into the uh, more three times long. But get a smaller position if you do, and you have to have a stop of about two and a half points at this particular. Oh, it's up 6.89. I'll be back in a moment. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, so this is a pattern that for those of you who trade the futures, you will see this umpteen times. You get to a high, it makes a cup formation, it forms a cup formation, but it also then pulls back, but holds it within the rectangle. It makes this kind of bowl formation and it goes towards the high. And then you've got to keep monitoring because if the technicals continue to weaken, when it keeps doing that, when you do a vertical analysis, this is where you get the test because is this going to fail at 42.84? We've made a leg B. Is this going to be a peak B in the in the 10-minute chart? Uh, or will it take out the high and go to, say, 20, 20, uh, 42.86.25 uh, to extend right now in this bar, 10-minute bar? It's got about another seven minutes. This is what you've got to do. But look, the 9 is oh, in the 10-minute chart on the right. Nine's over the uh, 14 very nicely. The MACD is good. Stochastic's finally got to 83%. So there is, on the on longer term, it looks, that's the 10-minute, it's starting to hold very well. But nothing can work unless the shorter term, the little speedboat, keeps moving to the right direction. Okay. With that said, the next question came in. Uh, would I look at... FTNT, FTNT, this is Fortinet, I believe it's in the, uh, the security cyber, so yep, Fortinet, Fortinet cyber security area. It went to a higher high, it's pulling back at $1.74, $69.53. Um, I have to consider that this is a leg C, there's no other n uh, notation I can give it in the Chavway me methodology. This is your leg, this is your starting point with that uh, uh, low that was made at about, let me just give you the exact number, right on May the 1st, or was it? May the 1st, 3rd. May the 1st, 60.33, big red candle, makes a silent doji with a slightly higher high at 60.37 the next session. That's a real good clue. These doji candles, that's the reason why I like to use these candlesticks because it just gives you so much information. Look, yeah, doji candle at peak E right there around about the 17th or so of April and then it pulls back sharply from the uh, 60, 68 area down to the lower, what did I say it was, 56, was it? Uh, sorry, 60.33. So now that it has this huge candle, but it had followed through. That's really important. So that's your peak A. I call it maybe an alternative count, but it's not. It's a peak aim. Stochastic's fantastic. But when the stochastic goes from over 80%, under 80%, you've got to be watching out because that, that spill off could be real sharp, which it was. And it goes to peak A, then a peak goes to G slash B. There's no other way I can count this right now other than to say that's a C. 
So it's a peak C. It is pulling back a little sharper than you would like. And a very quick peak A to a leg F. Is this a, is this a start of a new move up? All I can say is that in the cybersecurity area, just looking at the monthly chart, this cup formation says it, it, it looks like it wants to go. How do you know it wants? What it looks like, it MACD just turned positive in the monthly chart. So the high of 74.34 is only five points away. And I think it's going to try to get there. I mean, I'm liking this market. We've been very selective. We've got in very selectively. We are in the three times long again uh, of the Dow. But this pullback today just seems to me maybe the sector that hacked the cybersecurity sector is getting hit. Uh, no, it's not. So maybe it's, I, I, I said, I, all I can say is my thoughts are that FTNT is in the group that has been leading the pack. It had led the pack yesterday. It went to not an all-time high, but a new recovery high, a multi-month over a year-long um, recovery high. And I'm just going to say to you, I like it. Now, what would I do with a red candle like this? The key support will be 60. Let me see. 68, between 68 and 60, the whole area of 68 is going to be important support. So on this particular stock, I'm just saying to you, be careful, um, just on the very short term, because it's made the cup formation. You can see when I do a vertical count, look at that, from the 22nd of May, MACD, stochastic, 9 over the 40, everything was good. Now... The MACD is not as strong. Stochastics at 67, it's weaker. On balance, very strong. And the 9 still over the 14. I like it. All I can say is I'm not sure what the reason is, but that whole 68 area needs to hold as support. And the way I'm looking at it, it should go to a D. So if that was a high yesterday of 70, uh, 7163, it should go to 7164 in the next couple of days. And that's going to help the weekly because the weekly has made a real quick peak E made with one bar rest, small candle, and a new high this week. And the MACD is good. Everything is good about it. So I want you to see how it holds. Yeah, it's doing very nicely. Um, question came in just quickly. What happened to the S&P? What do you mean? Oh. Ha, ha, ha. There's your F slash C, and there's your D. So is this going to be a two-click a two session? All I can say is I, I, I've, I've practiced it. Sometimes I've, I've had it as a two-click session, but I myself have just got out of it um, because I, I had my show. I had all other things to do, and I just thought, nice game, just get out. Uh, you can always come back in. Then I never got back in. I had maybe maybe three or four tries to to get to Ghana some kind of upside momentum, um, thinking, oh, is this going to pull back? Well, all I can say is I've begun to try my best to make these two-click sessions and um, how to define it is the absolute, it's imperative to be able to do that. And the 10-minute is imperative in my work in giving you the, the momentum. So, yeah, you go, now I can put an up arrow and say the 10 minute is in a buy mode, it should go to a D today, a leg D. The MACD is strong, the nine's over the 14. So what you remember yesterday, or was it yesterday, or was it Friday? Yesterday, it must have been yesterday. I drew in this dashed line, I said, I'm telling you now that 48, 42.90 is gonna be really important for the next couple of weeks. Well, when we're down at 42.64, 68, uh, a little while ago, it looked like, what are you talking about? Well, we're right on it. We're at 42.89.50 right now in leg B. And that means there could be a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. And those are the things that I wanted to discuss, which says you can get a beautiful ball formation. It's all ifs. I mean, there's nothing here that you can say for certain. I can say for absolute certain that that was a low of this particular move right now. Is it the low or a low? I can't tell you that for sure, but I'm saying that's a low. That's fact. Here's a big candle that gave you the border for the next uh, chap wave, long, narrow rectangle formation. Is that fact? That's absolutely fact. Can I say it's going to last for another hour? No, I can't tell you that at all. But I can say if this is only a leg B and we pull back and hold 42.85 as support, and then we can even start even to trade into the 42, 93, 94 area. That is, you're going to be forcing people into this market. And that's really important. Okay, got that out the way. Next question came in. Um, 
Docs, D-O-C-N, yeah, I've been looking, oh, D-O-C-N, no, DocU is what I was asked about. Could I look at D-O-C-U? Whoa, I haven't updated this. I looked at it just the, about a week ago, and then I forgot all about it. Look at that, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and leg E. It could even be an instant restart. So what, what am I looking at for the market? You know what, I'll, I'll talk about that. isn't able to do the show and I'm in for the next hour I'll do the update I think I'll do the update I haven't heard from let me just check here to see if we've got any word from our, our wonderful engineer so far we haven't seen Stephen Irving so it looks like he might not be able to be with us okay so I'll keep an eye out for the meantime back at the ranch let's get back to what I was doing before we have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Dr. Sign, uh, I so I can't, it was uh, Steve who had asked me about Dr. Sign, either uh, Steve or Don. Uh, anyway, so Dr. Sign is uh, trading 58.62. It's up a dollar. 
And I'm going. I'll do this if Steve's not around. I'll do the show. I'll put this on as the next thing to do. Why? Because it's got the sine wave pattern with inner rectangle. It has a gap. It has all the stuff that we talk about. So many stocks have had lately. We'll talk about that. So that's and then uh, GS Mike and Den says uh, on the platter now. Dino Lupati Ravel's Alborado del Grazioso. Gee, you know, I remember playing, I, I think I played bass clarinet with that uh, when uh, Juntha Schuller conducted. Um, it's just a fantastic part. If I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm remembering correct. Uh, it's a fabulous piece, Alvarado del Gracioso. Anyway, so uh, in my former life as a professional musician. So um, what we're looking at here is uh, we're going to wrap up this particular segment, the very last segment. Let me show you here. Now you've got to be careful because we've had a spectacular move. We've had this leg B uh, in the 10-minute chart. Now it's gone under that 42.90. You see how important this is? 42.90. If there is a major pullback, for whatever reason, I don't care what the reason is, uh, under 42.80 in this particular move now, then we kind of done for the moment. And you have to get the trigger a whole new buy mode to, to, to start moving up. But the Dow's already 37 points up, S points, 8 points up. So people are coming in to buy, even though this is after fund buying normally. All right, so we've got the news coming up. I believe I'll be doing the news. I don't know if Steve's around yet, but if Steve's not, I'll be doing this coming hour as well. And there's a lot to talk about. Got questions, 